Welcome everyone to the Open Studio Tour Roanoke Artist Interviews 2023. This is Sarah Muse and I'm here with Rachel Uchizono and she is a painter here in Roanoke and she will be one of our hosts this year. So welcome Rachel. Thank you, Sarah. All right. So what can, um, what does your business, what is your business name? Is, is it your name? Is it something? Um, Uchi, Uchizono Gallery. I have an online store and gallery. So UchizonoGallery.com? Yeah. Okay, great. And then also, of course, on the Open Studios Tour website. <laughs> um, do you show anywhere in town? Um, I'm at the Market Gallery and at the, I'm at the Shenandoah Club. Okay. Just for another month. You're doing a show there right yeah. now? Yeah. Excellent. And then you'll be on Open Studio Tour, of course, yes. as a host with two or three other artists. So we'll, we're gonna, we're working on that right now. Um, and um, so tell me about uh, your background, uh, where you come from, how you grew up, all those fun things. Um, well, I grew up in Ithaca, New York, and so I've been in California since 72. So um, I was a musician for most of my life and no artist train, artistic training and then um, age 40 I saw the movie Eyes Wide Shut, that Stanley Kubrick film and his wife had paintings all over the penthouse and I thought I can do that <laughs> and so I started painting the next day and I was in, the ga in a gallery within a year and I just painted a lot. So. And I developed quickly. So you just, have you, well, I guess being a musician and everything too, that there's been a creative part of yourself, but you never really thought of yourself as a visual artist? Well, I found it comes from the same place, really, as far as emotional expression. But um, So it came very naturally to you. Yeah. Well, yeah. I kind of knew exactly what I wanted to say. And being in California, the uh, California... The artist there, um, that is the style I wanted to paint in. Excellent. So did you take any classes, any workshops or anything? Or did um, you just jump right in and I, just started I've painting? I've taken a handful of workshops just from or artists that I really like their style. Yeah. Wow. Well, good for you. That's exciting. <laughs> so um, so what, brought, what brought you to Roanoke? What... Um, and how has that changed how you paint? Well, I had a girlfriend um, study where to retire and mm -hmm. she picked Roanoke. And uh, I grew up with her in Ithaca, New York and it reminded her of Ithaca. So I love historical houses. So that's that's why I moved there. Just for a lower cost of living. That, that way I could be an artist and um, survive. <laughs> <laughs> it's very expensive in California. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, welcome to Rona. We're glad that you're here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and how long have you been here? Um, almost seven years. Seven years now. And um, and how has Roanoke affected your painting? Has it affected your style at all? Has it just affected your subject matter? Or has it affected anything, really? Um, well, the, the light is very different here. So I, I kind of had to overhaul my landscape painting because the light is cool here. So in the distance the shadows are a warmer color rather than a cooler you know like the blues in california is more of a gold light so right. it is very different painting here i i'm getting the hang of it though and so with that light is it, it does it feel like it's a darker cool i mean does it does it what does it do exactly to your painting style it well um it the process is just different um, choosing what to paint. It's definitely a lot more architecture here. So I'm getting used to it. Yeah. So are you painting more architecture or are you sticking more with your flowers and landscapes? Oh yeah, my garden. I grow, I grow things in the garden to paint yeah. seasonally, you know, so Good point. I've always done that. So your subject matter is based on what you pull out of the garden or what you actually see in your garden? Um, well, I plant for it, you know, dahlias, in the fall and persimmons and and then in the spring you've got peaches and um, zinnias and marigolds so yeah I'm into my garden do you like to paint it in place or do you like to pick them and bring them inside and create I, I do both 
Mm -hmm. I, I like to paint outdoors. Mm -hmm. I don't paint quite as much on location anymore because I can't hike and carry, you know, carry all the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can't do it anymore just physically. Don't. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of changed. I'm more of a studio painter now. And so does that affect the size range that you work with now too? Um, I am working bigger. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was noticing this piece is a pretty good sized piece comparatively to some of the other pieces on the wall, which we'll go around and take a look at here. Um, that, that it seems like that does allow for that a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Are yeah. you liking the big pieces or are they more challenging? Um, it's kind of a mindset. Mm -hmm. you, you really wrap your head around a big piece and then that's all I paint for a while and then I'll go to small mm -hmm. and then that's all I'll paint for a while. So. <laughs> I get that. It's more to do with hurting myself. <laughs> so I hurt myself and I'll do small small works for a while. Yeah. Now is that just pain wise? Or yeah, just injuries. Just yeah, yeah coming get, back to haunt you. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say that, that what you're known for? What type of work do you do? Um, I do peacocks. I have a taxidermy peacock. I pose in the garden and I, I sell a lot of pe peacock paintings. A lot of peacock paintings. Yeah. And so, still and life, too. I'm pretty adventurous. And so the, the peacock and the still life, they... Um, I'm going to show everyone the peacock because he's very cool. Here's your peacock. Yeah, I love peacocks. I love the colors. And so what kind of... What's, what is your style? What do you call your style? It's impressionist. Impressionist. That makes sense. Yeah. There's my peacock. Mm. <laughs> He's so awesome. Always wanted peacocks. I know, me too. Living in an old Victorian house, you feel like you should have them, right? But living within the city limits it could yeah. be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> they notoriously are not very quiet birds. No. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, so is there something that happened in your life that, um, that ignited this passion? I mean, I understand that you just kind of started painting, but, but what yeah. was it that really made that happen? Well, I um, had moved to Laguna Beach, and that is just the, the home of outdoor painting. So it, it's very social there. So you can just go down to the local cafe and meet some really great artists and go out and paint. So I did that for eight years of just hiking every day in Laguna Canyon and carrying my equipment and it was really fun. That's very cool. Yeah. So um, what materials do you use? So what are you, what are you painting in? Do you want to uh, show use, me some of your stuff? Um, my, my, uh, well, I use oil paints, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's a messy, a messy business. Well, that you wouldn't be an artist if it wasn't, right? That's true. You know where it is. Not everybody else might, but you know where it is. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I have, uh, things stuffed everywhere, so. All my favorite colors. The old Holland is the expensive one, so I, you know. If you want to get me something for my birthday, <laughs> give me some magenta. Did y'all hear that? She likes magenta. <laughs> and bright green. <laughs> oh, this is great. So tell me about, um, what, how would you describe your process? What, where, how do you start? Do you start with a sketch? Do you start on your canvas? Do you start with a background color? What do you do? Well, I do the, um, like an orange in the background just to give some warmth. So that orange canvas. that we're looking at there, that's your base coat? Yeah. And then I don't do a drawing. I just do, a, you know, a road map of what I'm going to paint. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Because, you know, landscapes are kind of organic shapes anyway. So mm -hmm. I like to kind of, you know, lose the drawing, not hold on to it. Are too you, much. are you, um, when you're doing a piece like this, this is, I'm guessing, is a landscape. Um, are you doing it by memory? Oh, or no. are you, do you have photos that you're taking? Yeah, I have photos. Okay, you're yeah, working and with. And then I, 
you know, I have a big screen so, oh. so I can see. So you really can see. Yeah. Yeah. And now you can really see because you have eyeballs now. She had just had surgery, so yeah. she can see even more. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting used to them. Which, which your style might become more realistic than... <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> well, we're going to stick with that impressionistic look. <laughs> I draw better, though, because I can actually see it. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And so from here, so how many how many layers do you typically use? I mean, how, how does that work? So are you working with one big mass, and then you go in and you fill in all your colors? Do you start dark to light, light to dark? Yeah, I do the darkest darks first, and then... Um... I work from there. It's kind of a negative space. You're coming back into the shape and, and finding it. Is this one down here kind of like an idea of where this could possibly head? Oh. Similar. Yeah, that's a peacock. And that's a peacock. Somewhere in Arizona. Yeah. This one. It's a peacock in Arizona. So what lights you up about um, your work and, and what you do? What what lights me up? Yeah. What what, um, what? Why are you passionate about oil paint? Um, the vivid colors, and um, I like. You can just scrape it all off if you don't like it, and and you get all these happy accidents, and uh, it's kind of inspiring. I love that. So tell me a little bit about this piece. Uh, well, it's a. Uh, Carillions want some paintings, and they wanted like a strong foreground, and then to fade into the the Blue Ridge Mountains. So that's what I'm doing right now. And that one is the same kind of idea of the the strong foreground. Same series. Yeah. So is the piece on your easel part of that, or is that something? Yeah. Yeah, they want some water paintings too. Clouds are amazing. And so you're finding there's a lot more cool blue than that warm California sun yeah. <laughs> in a lot of I these. I think that the, the distance, the hills are a little bit warmer than California. It's more of a purple, you know? Yeah. So it's different. So how does experimentation come into play with you? Do you find that you're experimenting, that you con are constantly experimenting? I see that you have some bottles mm -hmm. and stuff here. No, it's just getting new objects to paint. They're still alive, so it's my brother. So when you're, when you're experimenting, it's more about the subject matter yeah. than yeah, actually- Yeah, I have certain objects I like to paint over, but over and over again, but um, but it's always fun to find something new. Of course, you like your. Oh, the I got a new um, taxidermy Ooh. bird. I was gonna a new raven. I was gonna try and incorporate into something. Ooh. Oh, he's amazing. You can pull out the iridescence kind of of the feathers. Yeah, and I wanted to do some interiors, so I, that's why I have the chandelier and the green settee. So I'm mm. hoping to go in some different directions, but every time I do, someone wants <laughs> something else. So That's funny. So your experimentation is really subject matter more yeah. than anything. I love that. Yeah. And so all of these are... are Mainly outdoor, but then you've got some indoor vignettes, and you set up all the indoor vignettes yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're getting some fancy china there. So do you ever do commission work? Yes. What type of commission work do you do? Um, usually it's landscapes. Usually it's landscapes? Yeah, people have a favorite place or something that's meaningful. Mm-hmm. And, of course, 
Carillion <laughs> and, other, and other such companies, I'm sure. You'd be happy to do big pieces for them too. Oh yeah. And there's some more. Hollyhocks. There's some hollyhocks from her garden. Yes, they had a good year. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that that's just gonna be wonderful just to be able to sit out in your garden and enjoy and are you yeah. sketching them at all or is it all painting do you no, just take I your just easel out it. there and and just so you're plein airing it in your backyard mm -hmm. nice that's a, you know a photo where's that Monet's garden a bunch of years ago that's beautiful Oh, it's great with the wisteria. Nice. That's just lovely. So what do you think um, sets your work apart from others? Um, I think I have a certain style that I've always had since I started painting. I think you can tell in each of my paintings. Because <laughs> notoriously there's going to be a, a a peacock feather somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, somewhere yeah, that should just be though. that should just become your signature, yeah. right? Just yeah. a peacock feather or a <laughs> I think I'm just kind of loose. Right. Do you have a favorite color that you like to use in your paintings? Does I like that violet blue. Oh, violet blue. And was it the magenta that you said earlier? Yeah, that the, old, <laughs> the old Holland magenta and the Utrecht cerulean. You like combining those yeah. two? Uh -huh. I guess a certain look that you're looking for, a certain thing that you're you're after. Yeah. And all of a sudden your body goes, oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it's a good composition too, it just kind of paints itself. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So as it goes, it keeps going until it says it's done. Yeah, when you start wrecking it, then it's done. <laughs> when you start wrecking it <laughs> when you add that extra little thing and you're like oh yeah no 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 did you have any other work do we have some work over here that we can look at too so we come out for open studios this is her really cute studio <laughs> this painting evidently might need to go home with me or something. I'm not sure. It keeps jumping out. I'm not sure what it is about it. <laughs> it's been jumping at us regularly here today. This is my first painting after I put the church window in. Yeah. Which, it's surprising. You can just cut through cinder block and stick a window. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually realize that it was set when um i've seen a couple other videos that you've done i didn't realize that it was actually set in your that's amazing yeah cool you can do things like that <laughs> it can be done <laughs> well this is the kind of beach canyon so when you're out in cal do you go out to california now and and paint at at times or um, I probably won't for a while. I spent three months there over the summer doing a show. Mm -hmm. and Did you paint it all while you were there? Yeah, oh, I painted it every day. Every day that's, while you... Yeah, that's when I fried my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I don't like frying eyes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Here's a big dahlia and peaches from the garden. Oh, yeah. Blow blue and blue willow. I'm 
stuck on that too. I paint a lot of. It's called what? It's um, Flow Blue or Blue Willow um, types of pottery in China. Oh, right, the, the pottery. Yeah, that's another thing I've drawn too. Nice. Is that because of the color or because of the design? Um, both, definitely. Mm -hmm. The pagodas and the, the willow tree. And then you've got the violet blue that's just perfect. Mm -hmm. So a question that I'm asking everyone mm -hmm. is what makes you laugh? Uh-oh, I don't know. Um, my kitty cats. <laughs> kitty cats are good ones. Yeah, they come out in the garden. I have, I put a trellis and then I kept putting layers of chicken wire until they can't jump over so they get to go out in the garden because they can't get away. So. so at the top of your fence line? Yeah, if you notice there's just chicken wire stuffed on the top. And then, <laughs> so then the cats can hang out in the garden all day. Nice. Yeah. There you go. So we have a nice life. It's very entertaining. So it is very entertaining. Yeah, animals have a way of doing that, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything else that you would like our audience to know? About you or your work? Well, I'm hoping people will come visit my studio. I think it's it's kind of a personal thing, you know, to come and see where you work and see all your objects that you love. Mm -hmm. I think it's good for people to see. Gives them ideas on what they can do creatively, too. Mm -hmm. Give them a little inspiration. Yeah. 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 I think, I think it's really wonderful to have artists willing to open their doors so that people can see the process. Yeah. Um, that it's not, it's, it's not just putting paint on a piece of paper. There's a lot more to it. Yeah, there's a lot of parts to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Can you tell everybody where to find you again? Oh, well, I'm at the Market Gallery downtown. And okay. online? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I, I have an online store, um, Uchizono Gallery, or Rachel Uchizono Fine Art. Excellent. And um, you can also find her on the Open Studio Tour Roanoke.com page. And uh, please do come out and join us because her studio is lovely. And I'm going to pan up real quick because it's very cool. Um, <laughs> so do come on out and join us. Um, it will be April 29th and 30th, 2023. And the studios are open from 10 to 5 p.m. So come on down. She'll have a couple of guest artists too. And uh, we'll have a little fun um, having everybody come in and taking a nice little peek inside studios and seeing wonderful art for sale. So come on out and see us. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.